Now, Patrick, I heard you say in another interview that there's kind of a few people that come out of film school. There's those that say, oh, I only want to direct, and mm. they're like a 24-year-old kid, and, and that's right. a problem <laughs> itself. But I want to talk about another problem, because you said there's people who work as camera people or editors mm -hmm. that, boom, they find jobs right away. Yes. But then a new dilemma comes, and mm -hmm. that is they're paid well, and then they get trapped with... Yeah obligations, a lifestyle, and how do they make that passion project or how do they leverage all that into making this next great film that yeah. they envision want? And that's their whole reason for coming to LA or New York right. and going to film school. So are there these, is it only the starving artists and the weekend warriors that can actually do this? Or is there a middle ground somehow? That can, you mean actually do this by, you mean like make, make a film? Or when you say do this. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to be so vague. Yeah, I, I mean make a film and, and have it make some type of return. Yeah. Because you do get trapped. You get those the, yeah. the, the good paying job and then you spend more money. And yeah. you want a nice lifestyle. It's understandable. Yeah. I would say that um, you know, if, if, making, if making your own films is important to you, you got to keep that dream alive. It's as horribly hokey as that sounds, it's really true. Um, I didn't come out, you know, I grew up in Chicago. I did not move to Los Angeles to make corporate videos. I, I did not come here to shoot reality television. Um, I did not come here to light low budget, uh, low budget movies, which all of which I've done in my in my sort of early career um, <clears throat> but I you know I realized you know I went to the American Film Institute I I uh, got out of school um, uh, well I came out about 20 years ago I've been in LA almost 20 years now um, for me job number one was just being able to afford to stay out here paying my student loans, paying my rent, paying my insurance. Like, I was on my own. I had to figure out how to do those things. And so I started, I started as an electrician and a best boy and a gaffer and did that for about three years. Um, met a lot of people, learned a ton, figured out my way around town, figured out my way around this industry. Then I went back to shooting. And I, I said, I'm not going to do any more lighting. I'm just going to shoot, shoot, shoot as much as I can. I did that for another probably um, eight years, I would say. In the meantime, while all this was happening, Christine and I um, got married. We, we bought a house. We had uh, started our family, um, which were all things that I was not willing to sacrifice. For my film career. I mean, I wanted to have a life too. Um, right around 2004, 2005, you know, Christine and I were in our 30s. We had built a life together that we that we really loved, and we kind of said, you know, this is it. This is the moment. Like, we're at a fork in the road. Either we're going to keep going down this road and make other people's TV shows and movies, or we're going to just Pull the, pull the plug and just make our own stuff from here on out. And that's, that's what we did. And that was, that was when we started making our first film, Wordplay. Um, and, I, you know, I really admire the moxie of a, of a, of a 22-year-old film school graduate who only wants to direct and only wants to make movies. And if they can do that, terrific. Every, you know, once or twice in a generation, a Steven Spielberg is going to come around, a Steven Soderbergh is going to come around, a Paul Thomas Anderson is going to come around. And these are people who all really made great films in their 20s. But then there's the rest of us. And the rest of us have to figure out a way to make a living. And you also have to really work at your craft, you know. so. I think that studying any sort of discipline within film school is, is very, very valuable. In my own experience, I've seen that studying camera, 
which is what I, I studied cinematography at the American Film Institute, or studying editing are two really good places to begin because those are the kinds of jobs that production companies need to hire all the time. They need grips, electrics, and camera ACs. That's what camera folks are good at. And they always need editors. Um, and, I, and I have found, at least at AFI, that the people who study directing, the people who study screenwriting, um, are those are a little tougher to break in on. Um, because not many people want to hire a 25-year-old screenwriter or a 25-year-old director. Um, by the way, I would put production design in that camp also of, uh, of people who can get hired pretty quickly because production departments have very big teams. Um, and uh, I, I, one of my roommates in film school is a guy named Todd Chernowski, who's just really one of the best art directors in Hollywood. And he was working from the day he got out of school and hasn't stopped working since. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know, I hope that answers your question, but I, I, I don't, the last thing I wanna do is sort of discourage someone or, no, no, or, no. or make them feel like it's harder than it's gonna be. But I, I think the bottom line is, if you wanna have a good career, I think you have to be patient. I think you have to wait for the, for the right moment in your life where you have a little bit of financial stability and you have, more importantly, you have confidence in your own abilities to tell a story. And when that moment happens, that's when I think you should really strike and try to, and try to make, make your first film, make your first television pilot, make your first you know whatever it is. Um, I think that's a good moment in your life to really break out on your own. And I'll tell you, one thing that I've noticed, because I, I, I'm weird like this, but the more I've studied other filmmakers, the more I've seen, it's, it's amazing. Overwhelmingly, the first time filmmakers tend to be in their mid to late 30s. I've, I've seen that over and over and over and over again. I mean, I, re I remember reading about Martin Scorsese when he turned 30, I don't think he had made his first film yet, and he was like devastated, like, oh my God, I'm washed up at 30. Um, but a few years later, he started, and he's done fine. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think he's going to be okay. He'll be fine, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways.